Yeah. And then time we're going to put the camera on you, all right? Yay. So game number three here for the Ting Open. Final game will send the winner through to the last qualifier spot available through the NA qualifiers. Bottom left side of the map playing for flip side tactics. It's the red Protoss Bales. In the top right, as the orange Protoss, it's EG's Huck. All right, camera work on Zombie Grub, so blame everything on her if it goes wrong. Oh my god. Oh, it's not even tilted for once. Cool. All right, I hope you're back. Hey. Yeah, because I didn't bother putting it on yours because I had advanced warning. <laughs> Me smirk. All right. He's gone. Spencer, Spencer 12,000, Hawk 3,000, Bales. If you guys didn't hear that, that's, that's... Hawk 12,000, Bales 3,000. That's not surprising to me, although I do think that the people who are a little bit more familiar with Bales do know that he is very much capable of uh, taking this series. Like, I think Bales right now is still undisputed. He's been like this for a while. Like, definitely top five, if not top three, like, any Protosses. Yeah. I believe it's just, yeah, Huck has that bigger name. Huck's been looking pretty good in general and in tournament matches, although finally Scarlet got some revenge of the last three series in that winner's qualifier match, which is what brought Huck down here into the loser's qualifier. It's actually said a qualifier for this match, uh, so I guess I'll misspeak here. Puck, Drunken Boy, the winner of that goes on next, and then the winner of this will go on to face them, and that is the qualifier. It's top three, which is uh, top two and then bottom one. Yeah. Well, in the uh, last two PvPs that we've seen from these two players, it did go to relatively macro-oriented games. Uh, third expansions, kind of on the later side in that last game, but still, we've ended up seeing both of the players willing to play a little bit less aggressive. Like, I would even go so far as to say, like, the Oracle opening from Bales, yeah, it can kill your opponent if they're totally unprepared for it, but most Protoss players play a way that you're going to be prepared for those Oracles. Like, just having the militia core and well-placed pylons, you can deal with most oracle harassment. So I feel like we're probably just going to be seeing something similar. Well, I do see a Stargate from Huck. It is really odd to see, okay, again, specifically Huck, who has been known to be like aggressive in the past, sure. Not that he was always like a cheeser, but he had that uh, you know stigma attached to him for a while. Uh, but also just compared to the other regions PvP, where we see Ma Mana looking a lot more like the Koreans, I guess, or just being Mana, I'm not sure which one, but very, very aggressive and super cheesy all in The Koreans, SOS, wanted to get things over with, oh, another Stargate, and he was super aggressive in PvP as well. And both of those regions, you know, the PvP matchups would end in like 15 minutes total, 10 minutes total. Whereas, you know, in here, North America, we're getting some fairly long PvPs, and they're setting up as long PvPs, you know? It's not coincidence, they're not going back and forth, they're both going for Nexus first on two different maps. Yeah, that is really interesting to think about. I, I wonder if that has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, Koreans are really just abusing the fact that you don't get that many Photon overcharges, so it, you don't have nearly as much of that defender's advantage as long as you can bait them out, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure why that would uh, why that is the case, but Huck is dropping down his Robo, which uh, is kind of interesting. He's also going for the Phoenix opening, which is going to pay off really, really well versus the Oracle or Proxy Oracle that uh, yeah. Bales is going for. Well, it can if the Phoenix is in the right place. Yeah, currently scouting just for I don't even know what, maybe a War Prism, maybe a Proxy Pylon, or just going across the the field now. I guess I'll quickly check the income graph, and actually, Huck, surprisingly, has not exactly dominated. Again, like, the, the high marks here might look impressive, but you gotta look at these numbers over here and see that it's not that big of a deal. Because I'm gonna try and check Huck's vision, see what he told him that uh, going for Phoenix would be better. Doesn't look like much told him, actually. This is the first time he's gonna scout the Robo. Mm. Pylon is a uh, Photon Overcharge, and yeah, he didn't know about the Oracle. If he did, he would have had these Phoenixes in position. It was just coincidental he was opening up with Phoenixes. Yeah, Oracle is going to go ham right now on some of these probes. There's first blood, and there, uh, there's a couple more bloods, actually. Seven, eight, nine bloods. <laughs> nine bloods. Yeah, and the Oracle was intentionally sacked, it looks like, at the end right there. The proxy's not going to be used anymore, because now Huck would be on top of it as he knows what's up. And unfortunately, his Phoenix opener feels a little worthless compared to what that Oracle just did. Yeah, that was a uh, pretty effective, and that is one of the kind of weird fears about Phoenixes. But I've got to say, like, 
that Oracle opening from Bales, the start, I mean, just compare it to when Hux Stargate finished up. There were already two Phoenix out on the map, third Phoenix coming out by the time the Oracle finished up and was starting to make its way over to Huck. I think that Huck just sort of said in his mind, like he was leaving his Phoenix at home, he was saying, okay, if my opponent opened up with Oracle, it'll be arriving by now. Oh, it didn't arrive? Cool, I can send these Phoenix out to scout. And like, it's just this really weird, intricate timing that kind of played against Huck. Probably. The uh, Vordery going over here to scout, it seems like I know exactly what the what was up. As the Phoenix has, of course, got a full scout of the main base and saw no Stargate. He was like, where the hell did that Oracle come from? So, gonna take care of at least the pylon. The Vordery staying here to take care of the Stargate's a little risky, but the Phoenixes will be able to keep an eye on where the army's going, so... I don't know if the Phoenix has quite scouted this army movement, but it's not going to kill the Vordery anyways. It is going towards the front. Uh, there is an Observer here, there's a couple pylons, for both parties, actually. The uh, stasis trap's really cool, but it is going to be spotted by Bale, so he'll know to either avoid that or won't kill it. <laughs> Let's hope he remembers it, but he may be sacrificing his Observer in exchange for that knowledge. Uh, it Another does one. go down. Yeah, Observers in PvP are so ridiculously important, um, but, well, he does manage to kill off that uh, Stasis Ward. Yep. Uh, with an Immortal and a couple of Sentries, though, I think... Puck is okay. Bill's just uh, lose a couple of adepts here. Phoenix are still roaming around, trying to do whatever they can. I don't know how much they've really gotten. This is this is the first time they've actually been killing probes, so not much. But they are killing quite a few, Ooh. making up for that oracle yeah. in the beginning. Huck uh, is still down in probes, however, by ten, and his third base isn't even saturated right now. Yeah, a little bit awkward, but you know, even forcing in some warp ins back at home is going to be nice for those phoenixes because it just means, hey, that's less I have to worry about with this aggression. Oh my god, if this stasis trap finishes up just barely, that is such a oh my god, zombie yeah. grub. I need to nerd out about that stasis trap. It completely <laughs> blocks the stalkers from blinking up unless he wants to blink up one sacrificial stalker. Yeah, we oh. saw this before in a very crucial scenario in another PvP, uh, like a month ago or something like that, where it was literally do or die from like parting or something like that. I don't remember. And they they blinked on top into a stasis ward. So this has been a really cool addition. It's almost like the equivalent of the addition of the wall off for Terran against Protoss on Orbital Shipyard, just very specific to the map, but very important in uh, certain scenarios. And of course, if Bales has control of the map, then that is a scenario to you know perfectly put down a stasis ward. Huck mm. is once again like that first game, like rather far behind when it comes to tech, like his upgrade, his blink, his charge, all far behind. But in exchange, he has that higher army supply just straight up, which was actually what happened in the first game on Prion Terraces, which he ended up winning. But that was, I think, even more of a deficit uh, because, of course, Bales lost his third in that game, whereas he's been happily mining for quite some time. Yeah, another observer snipe off uh, for Huck, so Huck up. Killing a couple of those observers, like like I was saying, it really does suck. It's not just the fact that observers are important. It's the fact that they take time away from the robotics facility. And right now, you can see Bales wants to be producing disruptors. He wants to be producing things that help him win the direct engagements, not stuff that is backup safety for DTs, as well as like runbys and watching out for warp prisms. Like you don't want to have to remake those observers. Yeah, for sure. Templar Archives has finished up for Bales. She's talking more on the advanced tech. So he has a couple of Archon books in this army. Still behind an army, like supply overall, but has a very strong looking one. He's also getting a couple of disruptors, which Hawk is a little bit later too. Both on double robo, however. And uh, a lot more gateways coming down as they both get the fourth bases up and running. Hmm. And this is where we get to that sort of interesting point in the game where we start to see like the deviations in how these armies are formed. Like they, both armies may end up having, you know, some of those immortals and stalkers and stuff, but like the mixing in of these void rays is something that we saw from Huck in the last game too. And a lot of the times this does kind of end up being like a sort of preferential thing. Like some Protoss players really believe like, hey, if I get the void rays into my army, like they work out really well. And I know how, I know one, cute little way that I can open up and when I get all these immortals like I can safely get up this void ray count big enough to at least impact a little bit um Bales though with these archons gotta be looking to put, do this move in but this is gonna be such a hard place to push into it is hitting before charge is quite done for Huck oh. but a nice nice stasis trap gets a chunk of those units the disruptors are they, they were here where'd they go oh there they are <laughs> they're in the heart of the army um yeah 
They do not get the first great shot that they would want. A couple of gateways are being canceled slash killed, however, so not bad. It's a very awkward engagement. Neither of them really wanting to. Bale Ooh. still has some time on that stasis trap. It's about to wear off, however. There we go. Yeah, really quick, sick play from Huck. He uses the Phoenixes. That He only has two Phoenixes, and they're so low on health, but he picks up one of the disruptors that Bales fires off a shot with and cancels it right as he's about to go off in his army. Uh, that's actually like a really, really great play because it's going to keep him alive long enough that he can get up a couple more units, and I feel like Huck, as long as he's well positioned, he's going to have a slight advantage in this. Bales would have made a mistake of going way overboard with the probes, by the way, oh. as nearing max. Oh, that was a really good shot. Oh, oh that was Huck's disruptor. Was it? Oh God. Oh my God. I saw that... the first. The first one was Bales, Ooh. but oh my God. Damn, Whoa. that was a good one though. Just disruptor shots going every which way, actually evening out because all of them got bad disruptor shots or good disruptor <laughs> shots, depending on what you want to look at. It. The point is it all evens out now that there are pretty even army supply, even upgrades, uh, somewhat even army composition. Of course, Archons for Bales, Void Rays for Huck, but the disruptor count has caught up too. Bales does uh, sneak in that plus three weapons, and the game mm. does go on. Oh, God. Yeah, Bales is unable to push into this engagement. I like the fact that Huck is really adamant about getting up this wall in to prevent those charges, to prevent the oh, Archons from being super effective. Oh. oh, my God. Huck manages to kill off two of the disruptors for Bales. He's going to kill off the them. last one. That's all of them. Oh god, he has to retreat from that. Five Ooh. to two, and of course the two are just coming across the map right now. Two more on the way, like they're consistently producing two deserters oh. at a time, but Bales, I don't think he wants to push into this anymore. I'm not sure why he is. He's trying to buy time for these Zelts over the third expansion to just go and ah. do some damage. He is pulling the army out of position, but he's gonna lose everything he oh. has in his main army in exchange. Oh god, yeah, he was already doing so poorly, but another disruptor hit looks to have gotten most of his retreating army. Oh. I mean, the Zealots are still doing a lot of damage, but they already did a lot of damage. Even before this, they had gotten up uh, 11 more probe kills. Oh. But it's about that army supply. It's always been about that army supply. Bales has never had a problem economy-wise. He's had more probes, he's got a fifth base on the way right now, but his army was mismatched once those disruptors are taken out by Hux disruptors. I mean, oftentimes I think even as observers we pay attention to the group of stalkers, the group of immortals, the group of archons, but really I think a lot of pro gamers are intentionally trying to hit the heart of those disruptors for their opponent. Once it's disrupted out of the equation, most of the time you're going to have like, you know, even gateway units, except that now you have explosive, you know, balls to death and mm -hmm. they don't. Yeah, I mean, the disruptors uh, effectively end up being similar to like how Tempest uh, work, where it's just that like, chip damage. And even sometimes you can get the massive hits, but even just having that ability to zone out your opponent and maybe get like a unit or two units with those disruptor shots is really, really effective. And if you take out your opponent's disruptors, suddenly they can't play that uh, kind of footsie game with you. <laughs> footsie. Uh, the server shot's going this way and that, of course, with uh, Hawk's count at nine compared to Bale's six. Both Ooh. of them are at that count where, where they are going to just be able to consistently throw out the attack. So it's odd. It's almost like that Colossus problem that existed in Heart of the Swarm. Where, you know, after a certain point, where it was like seven Colossus or something like that, like they're like any extra were kind of useless. That's when you start buffering with um, Archons and Immortals and whatnot. I'm not sure there is a point where there's too many Disruptors, but we might find out in this game. Uh, yeah, they're still continuing to make Disruptors. I feel like the, the point is where you start saying, like, should I just be investing into Tempest? But, whoa, Bales is going to be able to get up into the main base. I cannot emphasize how big of a deal this is because... He can control this ramp now. He can use his disruptors to control the ramp. And how does Huck defend his production? Uh, time warp could go down. I think he was winning, wanting a recall if things went poorly, but the Mother's Record was, yeah. of course, caught by the army. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is so awkward. Time warp finally does expire. Huck can try and move into his main base. All of the disruptors are bunched oh, up though for Huck. Oh, my God. What is even happening? They just trade all of their disruptors. And now there's nothing but bling stalkers left over. Two more disruptors, four bales. One of them goes down. Another one, I guess, is still on cooldown. That is so many charge lots, and they are left oh. behind. Oh, this did not go well for bales at the end, however. Like, his his base army was bling stalkers. Oh. Worse than the base army of Huck's charge lot archon. Oh, yeah, nice to round on that cannon. <laughs> That was really well done. Uh, DTs are going to get picked off and immediately afterwards these stalkers are too. Here's the thing that we haven't really talked about though. Oh, uh, yeah. <coughs> well, okay. Oh, Bales. <laughs> that juke, he moves in with the stalker. Oh my god, is he actually going to be able to get some more? 
How did what does this disruptor still do? Yeah, this yeah. disruptor is just like, okay, Let's... look, red looks a lot like orange. Maybe he won't notice. <laughs> I feel like this um, is happened. <laughs> but uh, like, okay, here's the thing. Like Bales did have a decent economy behind this. He did actually make a decent size sword. I mean, it's definitely not amazing. He's still going to be struggling quite a bit versus Hux Force, but he has an army and it is somewhat comparable if you get good disruptor shots with it. Yeah. But, I mean, if you don't, then it is not comparable at all. Once again, the army oh, supply yeah. not in favor of Huck, but also just blink stalkers against charge on Archon Immortal. They'd have to have some amazing blink and, like, you know, just kiting micro to actually win out that base fight as well. And I think that might have been Bale's major problem. Like, I have to imagine there is a reason that he's sticking on blink stalkers. I'm not a PvP expert. But Huck going for the advanced tech, even actually being the slower one in most of these games, but getting to the ultimate composition later, I feel looks a lot better at the end of the day, especially if you're going to trade yeah. off disruptors like they've been doing. Yeah, and the other thing is, like, you take a look at the Immortal count, and yeah, the Immortals, you can see that some of them have seen some wear and tear, mostly from disruptor shots, but Huck has kept them alive. He's done a really good job of keeping them alive, because you have to remember, both of these players have been bleeding out disruptors, so their robotics abilities have not been making more immortals. They've been making more disruptors. Huck has only lost a total of two of his immortals, like Ooh. this entire game. That's and he's cool. had these, yeah, massive immortal counts since like minute eight or so of the game. So we've, we've always been noting that Bales had a very high probe count. It's actually been diminished here. Um, so it was at 81, now it's at 62. But I want to bring up the res uh, resources lost. Like it is, thank God, levels that Bales had such a good economy because the resources lost is a total of 10,000 more for Bales. That's a lot. That, mm -hmm. is a, that is a large army that you just lost. Yeah, he did have the economy to back it up earlier, but after losing that bottom right hand expansion, I'm not so sure it's going to work out quite as well. But again, like this is PvP now. It's, you can have the worst army, but if you get the disruptor shots, you can still make it work. Make it work. Sorry, I had to. Uh, well, Huck uh, going to be sending a small little squadron of zealots down to the bottom right-hand corner, trying to do a little bit of damage. But Bales is once again going to get into a position where he looks like he may be able to get into the main base. And this time, no, actually, no, this time he still doesn't have the most ship for it. No, he does have a most ship to back out with. Well, this is uh, oh, always, again, uh, awkward. Very awkward. Oh. Oh my god! Um, oh god, the sandwich of Archons is real! Oh Jesus! The Blink Stalkers can obviously leave, but the Disruptors are SOL. Bye bye. Oh god, and Stasis Wars! <laughs> this is so I familiar. love these Stasis Yeah, I love these Stasis Wars, <laughs> but okay, here's the difference. This time, there wasn't this nice economic advantage going in favor of Bales. In the bottom right-hand corner, two Zelts have cleaned up those 12 workers that were mining there. Huck has the top left-hand bases. Huck has the goal. GG gets called. GG. GG. I, I only got to see the latter half of that game, but I'm glad I did. Damn. <laughs> PvP is fastly becoming my new favorite.